I'd like to work through a problem that didn't work very well yesterday in class. Yesterday was Monday, March 9th. And uh, with that end, I want to go back and give that thing a start again. So let's see. Let's go back up here. Oh, there we go. So this is the problem that we had. Um, the problem is that this was listed as 9 when it's actually 11. Or sorry, 12. But it works fine with 12. I don't know why it was mistakenly 9. I made a mistake somewhere. <coughs> so, here's the question. You've got this distribution of values. They came from a summer camp. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of kids, right? So, the distribution of their ages is approximately normal. That's important. With um, mean of 12, standard deviation of 3. I'm going to be able to right on here. Yeah. So if we randomly selected samples of 16 children at a time, and we calculated means for each of them, like infinitely, billions of times, you know what this is, right? This is the sampling distribution of means. That's what we're creating here. If we created a sampling distribution of means, then what percentage of those means would have a value of greater than 13 years? What percentage of the samples would have a mean of 13 or higher. Now, the reason we would do this is probably because we actually did a study of summer camp kids, and we took a sample of 16 of them, and we found a mean of 13 years. So we want to know, wow, we found this mean of 13. How likely is that? Is that high? Is that weird? I mean, it's higher than 12. The overall average is 12. Is our sample really high or what? So we do this. We calculate a confidence interval for this. But um, we can do more simple things too. We can just say what percentage of people would we expect, or what percentage of samples would we expect to have a mean higher than this. Now I also have this question, question B. What percentage of individual campers, in other words just people, what percentage of means would be more than 13? That's actually an easier question to tackle, so I think I'm going to tackle that one first. So here's a breaking down the problem slide I made to help this. Let's do the second question first. This one, just the percentage of people and ages um, that have a mean or that have an age greater than 13. So we can do this by no, go back, drawing a number line and saying we know where the mean is, right? The mean is 12. And we know it's approximately normally distributed. So we can make this normal curve thing here. Oh, that's much better than my practice tries. And we know that like 13 is a number we're really interested in. Now these numbers are always, <laughs> these lines are always vertical. They always go to the top of the curve. You can't divide the curve sideways. There's actually jokes among statisticians about how stupid that is. It has to be vertical. These are stacks of blocks, really, really skinny stacks of blocks. The only way to divide it that makes any sense is vertical. Now, you can imagine that maybe, I mean, you don't have to do this, but I sometimes like to put some other numbers there just to see how it goes. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe the summer camp kids go up to 18 and down to like 6 or something. Now, you notice there's some space here, there's some space here. That's because this normal approximation is this theoretical perfect thing. It goes to infinity that way, and it goes to positive infinity that way. Nothing in real life does that. It's perfectly smooth. Nothing is perfectly smooth. So it's an approximation. It's not a real thing. Uh, lemon juice. Ah, for the vocal cords. Old choir nerd trick. Ma, 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 ma. Not a choir nerd anymore. Didn't work. Didn't practice for 30 years. So anyway, it'd be a good bass right now, though. So anyway, we want to know this area right here. We want to know this. This area. It's like measuring a floor or something. This is area. Um, it's a squared space. It's area. It's not a line. The line is here. Now, if we want to find the area above or below any number, well, we have a table. We have the normal probability table in a textbook. That'll tell us the area below any z-score. So if we figure out some z-scores for things, actually, we only need one. Like, what's the z-score for this 13? 
then we could figure out this area here because the table gives us the area below any z-score, right? So in a normal distribution. So we can figure this out. We can figure out the area below, the area from 13 on down, which is an estimate of what percentage of people would be less than 13 years old. So we just need to figure out that z-score. And then we can use that less than, and we can flip it around and figure out the greater than part. So the z formula is easy. z, sometimes we say z of x. That's not always necessary because it's a pretty simple thing. We do it a lot. Is whatever value we're interested in minus its mean over its standard deviation. So in this case, z is going to be the value we're interested in is 13 minus its mean, 12, over its standard deviation. We give that right here, um, 3. Sometimes I put a little thing in here like this, and I say sigma equals 3, just to remind myself right on the graph of what the standard deviation is. It makes the graph a little more junky. I don't know. It helps sometimes. So this is easy. Um, 13 minus 12 is 1 over 3. So z is 0 0.3. 3, 3. Lots more threes, but it doesn't matter because the table we're going to use only has two threes. So to find the probability, in other words, the area or the proportion or the percentage, proportion, percentage, probability, area, with the normal approximation, those are all the same thing. So to find this area below a z-score, so here's our z-score, 0 0.33, my point didn't work, there, hey, stop, 0.33. By the way, what's the z-score of 12? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's 0. The z-score of the mean is always 0. That's in a handy one to just throw on there just to remind you of where you're at. Everything up here is positive. Everything down there is negative. Okay, so we need to look at that normal probability table. So let's check out that normal probability table. Wow, is my image just frozen here? in that really bizarre pose. Ugh. I smelled something awful. Okay, whatever. Going to another one. I just can't do this forever. Let's go to this normal probability table here. We have a z-score of 0 0.33. Now, this has negative z-scores. It has, oops, scroll too much. No, come back. Okay, it has negative z-scores. It has positive z-scores. Let's scroll down here. Um, are you, you going to work with me, table? I'm scrolling. This is scrolling. Oh, this is uh, other tables. Come on, people. Here, give me a real mouse instead of my pen. All right, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You see that guy is scrolling. Okay, normal probability table. You have negative z-scores. That's not what we have. We have a positive one, positive 0 0.33. So we go to the next page positive z, 0 0.33. This will give us the area below to the left of smaller in numerical value than a z-score of 0 0.33, if we do it right. So let's look here. Um, a z, 0 0.3, that's the beginning, 0 0.3, but then the next decimal place is 3, so we have to look here. 0 0.33, 0 0.629, 0 0.6293. So let's switch back here. Go to our PowerPoint thing. Really, what is that? Okay, I'm just gonna make my face so small. It doesn't offend me with its like, weird, unpleasant gesture it's making, which I think is what you're all seeing too. So let's all uh, let's all go back here to the presentation. Oh great, I already forgot the six two nine three. My face distracted me because it was so bad. Um, so this area is point. 6293. Think about that. It's greater than 0.5, which it should be, right? Because up to here, all this stuff up to the middle line is 0.5, so it should be more. 0.6, great. It's like 0.63. 63%. So we need to flip that around to find this area. This area, we just do 1 minus 0 0.6293. 1 minus 0.6293. It's just a proportion, just like a probability or any other proportion. I'm going to crank up my little calculator here. 1 minus 0 0.6293, 0 
There's probably no reason to use all that. If we're going to turn it into percentages, then the answer to this question is like 37%. Or you could say 37.1%, because 3707 is like 371. So 37.1%. Yay, there we go. There's the answer to that second question. Using the normal approximation, we would estimate, knowing just this and this about a normal distribution, which is all you need to know, just the mean and standard deviation, and that it's approximately normal, which is just normal enough for this problem, which I will generally tell you. So 37%, a little over a third, should have ages greater than 13. Okay, this is running on longer than I thought, but let's erase all this ink. Okay, let's start again. Um, let's start over. Let's look at this one. The original problem. What percentage of sample means should be greater than 13? So let's do the same. Oh, why? Why did you do that to me? Why? Well, why won't you do that when I make you do it? I mean, seriously, come on. Will it just do that? No, no, of course you don't do that. I don't know how to make it happen. Okay. Let's draw this line, which is so beautiful and straight. Same kind of distribution. We've got a 12 there. we got 13 there. If you want, you can put like an 18 up there. You don't need to. That's just me imagining some other numbers to make it seem a little more real to myself. A 6 down there that looks like an angry G. So, those are the raw scores. You know we're going to need some Z scores, too. Now, when I draw my normal curve here, it better be skinnier than the other one. Why? Because the distribution of means is always skinnier. It always has a smaller standard deviation. We don't know what the standard deviation is, but we're going to figure it out. That's all we need. Just a mean and a standard deviation, figure out the z-score of 13. Now 13 is in a different distribution. Same mean, different standard deviation. So I'm going to draw a skinnier distribution. Okay, so this area is going to be smaller. The area above 13 there. I should go to the top, technically. That should not have a gap in it. Also, it shouldn't look like a lump of pudding falling on its side. But... We have what we have. So, we need a z-score of this. What's the z-score of 13? It's not 0 0.33 again, because now there's a different standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is what? Well, the standard deviation of this distribution has a special name. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, which is what this whole thing is, is called the standard error of the mean. And that standard deviation... You don't know what it is, but there's a simple formula. So the standard error of the mean, sometimes written as like sigma sub x bar, so standard deviation of the means, is just the standard deviation of the raw scores divided by the square root of n. So, in this case, that is standard deviation of the raw scores is 3, square root of 16, 3 divided by 4, so this, this standard deviation is 0.75, this little standard deviation here is 0.75. So it's a skinnier standard deviation. The other one was 3. This is less than 1. So let's find the z-score of this. Now it's in a distribution with a mean of 12, standard deviation of 0.75. So z is, you know, x minus mean. Okay, that's really ugly. So it's 13 minus 12 divided by 0.75 so that's 1 over 0.75 come on, point so that's 1.33 so the z you know what the z of 12 is here it's the same 12 is still the mean so the z score is still 0 but now 13 has a bigger z score 13 is farther, is more standard deviations away. So instead of being one third of a standard deviation, it's one and a third. So it's 1.33. So let's switch again. Let's switch to our normal table. Why? 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 That wasn't just. Just hide over there, please. I don't need you quite yet. Okay. So. 
Oh, we we still have 0.6293, but that was 0 0.33. That's not what we have now. We have 1.33. 1. 0.1, 0 0.9, 1. 1.0, 1.1, 1. 1.2, 1. 1.3, or 1.4. That's too many. 1.3 something. 1.3. 1.33, 0.9082. All right, so let's switch back here. So, oh, why do you have to do that? 0.9082 is this area. Everything from 13 on down. Everything, all this stuff. This much of the distribution. Don't make your diagrams this horrible, please. Okay, that's 0 0.9082. So what is this amount? That area is, well, 1 minus 0 0.9082. So let me look here. 1 minus 0 0.9082 is going to be like 0 0.9 something. 0 0.09, sorry, 0 0.09, 0 0.0918. 0.0918. In other words, 9.18%, 9.2%. So, moving back where we came from, what percentage of sample means would we expect to have a mean? How many, what percentage of samples would have a mean greater than 13? What percentage of sample means would be greater than 13? About 9.2%. What percentage of individual campers? Well, that was about 37.1%, right? Is this making sense? Because I'm going to stop now.